And no surprise, Rome, there will be no Vox for D'Anzio. Yeah, and coming up from this, like, the Velocity team, they have an option here where they should have banned, I think, the Kroll. Because here, we know that Nemesis Hadra did, do not play that Adagio that often. Right, and there is no Adagio ban. Is that just because you think that this Nemesis squad, they prefer to play different heroes and now they're kind of stuck? Yeah, and preference overall, like if uh, Lost Boy Toph was to grab one of those rumors, most definitely he will be grabbing that Arden. All right, we'll have to wait and see. Oh. So they do feel forced to go Adagio. We'll have to see if that is actually Lost Boy on Adagio or not. Forecourt, are you surprised? It's not going to be Lost Boy on it. I talked to these guys. They said if they can get an Adagio, they're going to do it, but it's not going to be a Lost Boy. I would fully expect to see an Arden now with the Catherine locked in. All right, and Halcyon Hammers, they of course have been thinking this through. Are they going to pick the crawl away and deny Hardik that way? That's one more way you can go about it, Rome. We'll wait to see if the pick comes through. But first, how do you like Veins on Catherine? Vayne's has been exceptionally well on Catherine, mainly due to this, his commanding lead. And with Catherine, you're always in that front. You're always trying to make plays and instigate for your team. I think with his voice over the team, they have a great chance of initiating these team fights. And there it is. They take the crawl away from Hardik. They must have planned this all out in advance. We'll let the Adagio go through. We'll force them onto that. We'll pick the crawl away. And it's Nemesis Hydra countering with a Black Feather. So with Nemesis Hydra, they're going after this bump composition where they're pretty much going to be relying heavily on this Black Feather to stand up front and pretty much do as much damage as possible. And how would you think they should round out this comp seeing what we see on the board? Well, ideally with this one, now they have to grab themselves an Arden, and this falls perfectly into the laps of Lost Boy Toph, where he's gonna step it up with that Vanguard and be sure to watch his gauntlet. <laughs> oh, it's a sky! For court, they led you astray. The power of winging it, man. <laughs> I'm sure they told you that, but things are changing fast on the fly. It will not be a sky. This is what we talked about. They ultimately did ban the Vox and pick the sky. How are Hardik or Chicken on a sky? Um, this is gonna be really well for them, I think. As long as they're able to mechanically uh, position themselves where they can receive as much of the benefits coming out of the Dajo as they can, they're, be, they're sure to actually engage on proper terms. All right, and at D'Enzio is going to be forced either onto that crawler or more likely that scarf. This is going to be interesting. Let's take it to our casters and find out how match two goes. It's already Halcyon Hammers up one nothing. All right, thank you very much to Playoff Beard. I am Tasty Bacon. Alongside me is the one and only Humanist, and we are going to be calling all the action of this very first semifinal match. Halcyon Hammers taking on Nemesis. This is sure to be thrilling, especially with that Adagio coming out from Lost by Tough. He has not played this hero yet in the entire winter season, so there is nothing to watch for video from this one. Yeah, we didn't expect that to be coming out. Also very interested to see how the Scarf's gonna work out for Velocity as well. And uh, I think this is a very fun composition, very aggressive, huge damage potential as well. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the the Kroll and Scarf is a composition that Halcyon Hammers, whether it's Kinetic or Velocity, they're very familiar with. They run, Both of these teams run this composition multiple times throughout the qualifiers and the tournament, uh, the championships here. So yeah. it's nothing that they're strangers to. It's one that, I personally, it's it's so frustrating to watch because it's it seems to struggle early and then all of a sudden it just hits a second gear at like the 12 to 15 minute mark and just takes over the game. So it's so difficult to play against. You have to snowball extremely hard early on. Uh, unfortunately, it does look like we have a bit of a pause here uh, to start things off. So we will be getting into game once that gets sorted out. But for now, we get to do a little bit more you know, analysis of these team compositions and what we have here. I mean, like they were saying on the desk, banning away the Vox, picking the sky, it gets Dienzio off of one of those super high mechanical heroes. But I mean, the Scarf, we, we know how much the Scarf is about the positioning. That's going to be something big to watch, but it's from Aloha. Dienzio is actually on this crawl. So the question is, Will that be a lane crawl? I know we have uh, at least one person well, watching yeah. who's a big fan of that we got, one. We got a big fan back there. Of course, <laughs> Audi loves that lane crawl, and it, it can be used to huge potential. I think a lot of people underestimate what you can get done with that hero. Even if you have a rough start, Absolutely. it's very easy to come back. You just got to get that good gank <laughs> off, get that good positioning. But of course, if we look at Nemesis Hydra, they have very good ability to be mobile, to get on top of that scarf with Black Feather, with Sky. Mm -hmm. so so, if, it, like you said, it's very, very important. Veins, of course, an incredible <laughs> player. He'll be on point with all of those silence. Get that blast trimmer. Get that stun to peel him off. But at the end of the day, it's 
it's all about where the scarf is in these fights. Yeah, it's going to be so tough. And because of the fact that Black Feather and Sky, like you were mentioning, they both have the ability to dive onto that back line to try and get past the front line of Catherine and Kroll to blow up the scarf immediately when a fight starts. It can be so difficult for a scarf to stay alive. I mean, it, there's so many different things that are, we're going to have to keep our eyes on yep. in this game. It makes it so exciting. Definitely. And also, you know, when I'm thinking about these teams, they have very deep friendships mm -hmm. uh, based. You know, you see Hardek, Lost Boy Toff, they go back a long time. Veins, Aloha, when you talk to them, they both, the, both of these guys, it's very similar uh, when you talk to both teams. They say there's so much synergy, we almost don't even have to talk to each other. Of course, they're yep. in communications. They're going to be talking about their cooldowns, targets who they're going to go on. But a lot of times, they're just doing the same thing. They're playing off of each other, and that's something that you can only develop over time. Yeah, and, you know, if, looking at the compositions, going back to that, this is something that, while it's surprising a bit to us, I have to assume that it's not at all for Halcyon Hammers. And we saw during the analyst desk, we kept showing shots of Halcyon Hammers at their desk. Uh, it was Veins had that notebook out, was writing right. down notes. They do that before every single game. What they're doing is actually writing down, okay, if they pick this hero, we're going to pick this hero. And they, they plan out multiple different possible I outcomes I feel like that's draft. like the magic playbook from like Waterboy. Yeah. <laughs> you know how the coach had like his playbook, it got stolen and then everyone's winning all the matches or it's like the Warlocks like yeah. dark secret book. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I wanna get whatever they write. I want to I want to get a look at those that, that one game. <laughs> yeah, but, we're going to uh, have to sit keep, down with They keep that notebook the... pretty well under wraps. Yeah, I got that under guard over it, there. There's just there's got to be so such a wealth of information written down there because again they do that before every single game they play mm -hmm. they plan out their draft they try and figure out okay if we pick this they're gonna pick this if this gets banned this is what's likely to get picked things like that but it looks like we are gonna be getting back into the game pretty soon yep so sit tight we are gonna be back very very quickly it's just a, a minor issue that is being sorted out internally by our wonderful absolutely phenomenal production and technical crew here at the Red Bull Esports studio. Yeah, They're, these guys have been awesome. It, it's been really a pleasure to work here, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been so smooth. Everybody's just doing incredible work in the background. So we got to get a shout out to production, of course. Yeah, you know, without without everyone behind the scenes, none of this happens. Yep. And uh, the game has been unpaused, so we are going to be getting ourselves onto the fold and finally starting things off for a game technically number two of our first semifinal matchup. And this is what I want to see is where do they go on the side of Halcyon Hammers. It does look like it will be Aloha in the lane with Dienzio roaming the jungle. So you know, once you get them off of the Vox, once you get take the sky away, looks like their backup plan is just to completely change things up. Yeah, but I mean, this is something that they've prepared for. I thought it was very interesting in the draft. They essentially let all of DNZO's best heroes, uh, best known heroes, get picked or banned away. Uh, and then they just throw this curveball. But we've seen Scarf Cruel so much uh, and just used to great success. Lost Boy, Hardick, posturing down here. Going to go ahead and uh, put a little damage out with that forward barrage. DNZO Vane's going to back up towards lane. And uh, when we look at these early engagements, uh, can you let me know, Tasty Bacon, how do you see these playing out? I mean, it's it's going to be tough for Halcyon Hammers in the early 2v2 fights in the jungle because Sky is extremely strong early on, while Kroll has one of the slower clear speeds in the game. So it's we saw right there, they went down, they didn't even go to the shop, they immediately went up into the lane just to try and avoid this fight. But Nemesis, they stuck around, they wanted to take it, and Veins oh, is going to fall. First blood going over to Lost Boy Toph on this Adagio. And I guess if we had any questions about, uh, you know, if he can be a playmaker on it, that's uh, a pretty good sign right there. It's so easy to underestimate what this Adagio can bring to a fight, even early in the game. And you just get a couple levels, you get hit, burn with that fire a little bit, and the Agent of Wrath damage coming out is just insane. Yeah, and just as a reminder, you know, for anyone who's tuning in, it's like, hey, I thought this started at 1 o'clock Pacific. What's going on? This is the first game that is pl being played today. Uh, because Halcyon Hammers went undefeated through the group stage, they do start with a 1-0 advantage in this best of five semifinal. So you're not seeing things. You didn't miss anything. <laughs> it was they do just get that one game advantage. Which is a off. pretty big deal. You essentially start with an uphill battle. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, 
hopefully it hasn't uh, changed their mental game too much. Dienzio slapping around Last Boy Toff here. Gonna get a couple stacks up, but really nothing to come of that. Hardik's up here, ready to pump out that Ford Barrage damage. These guys really just poking back and forth, looking for that opening that they can capitalize on. Yeah, Chicken123 doing a great job in the lane right now on this Black Feather, sitting at 25 CS compared to the 16 of Aloha. So they've been doing a good job of trying to keep this scarf down, but and that's oh, going to be a big step back in the right direction. Will he fall? He will not. The shield and the healing from Lost by Toph keeps Chicken alive. Yeah, that's unbelievable right there. That's the power of the Adagio, the power of Black Feather combined. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll see a lot more of those plays as we go through the day. It's really hard. You know, you put out all of this damage potential, you play against all these compositions, but you get a little fortified health and a heal on top of it, and it goes a long way. Yeah, really smart play thus far by Nemesis. Uh, they're putting a lot of attention into this lane, making sure Blackfeather stays safe. He has a pretty weak early game. Uh, he does do very well against ranged heroes, but he doesn't have that escape to get out. Obviously, his dash is just to an enemy target until he hits level 6. Right. And because they know that Kroll has a relatively slow clear, speed they're able to just keep um lost boy up in the lane with chicken keeping him safe which is why he has this lead meanwhile hardek is just farming the jungle freely much like dnzo is as well so when you have both junglers able to farm freely and you know you need to give a little bit of help to the lane the fact that they're they're just aware of how things are playing out that's why they're able to make those plays, make those movements, and it's leading to you know, a pretty nice gold lead already. That's exactly what I was going to mention right here. I mean, we're four minutes in, into the game, almost a 2,000 gold advantage, but they're just stealing away so many camps, and the efficiency out of Hardak moving through the jungle constantly is what's giving them that advantage. Yeah, and, you know, it's 27 to 18 in terms of the farm for the junglers, 40 to 32 in the lane, so just... Farming advantages across the board for Nemesis Hydra here to start things off. So looking very strong early on, but as we know, you know the Scarf Crawl. That's a late game composition. They can fall. They can afford to fall behind a little bit early on, as long as it doesn't snowball out of control. They will be okay. Interesting. Uh, we got an early minion mine pickup here coming out of Nemesis Hydra. Chicken engaged onto Dienzio's locked onto him with veins as well. Are they going to go oh. up for it? Oh, just on the and, edge. And oh, and he burns be down. Aloha going to be credited with that kill. So now 1-1 one, one at the five minute mark of this match. Yeah, great job there. The Spectral Smite wasn't sure if it was going to be enough, but now oh. Veins, he's the one in trouble. Death from above comes out, but it doesn't really catch anyone. It was a great job just to keep them from engaging further. Spitfire not quite having the range there to clip Hardek, and he will be able to recall to safety. But a good fight there from House and Hammers uh, gets them a little bit of security in this lane and uh, allowed them that the confidence that you kind of need going into it. And, you know, they didn't get a whole lot after the kill. You know, we talk about a lot when kills aren't worth a lot of gold, right? But it's all about what you do after the kill. But it does give a lot of value in terms of the mental advantage. You know, if you're constantly fighting and not secure, quite securing those kills, it can really make you question, you know, how strong you are at that point in time. And if you're giving up kills like that, even though you have a 2000 gold lead, if you give up kills, you really start to question, are we actually ahead? Well, you know, actually, I think it's very interesting and something to keep in mind with this series. Of course, we talked about the uh, the psychological aspect uh, of being a competitive player, and I feel like Halcyon Hammer's Velocity do have a massive advantage when it comes to keeping their cool and not tilting in a very serious game like this. Yeah, definitely. They're the team that, you know, when we were talking to everyone, they're one of the only teams that has actually support staff specifically for the mental aspect of the game. Right. They have a mental coach who is there for between games. Uh, they talk to him, they reset, essentially. Oh, but Hardex we're engaged on to. Death from above comes, it lands on to Dienzio. It's a three versus two Hardex. He's got good damage coming out, nice positioning. Chicken's here to back him up now, and Halcyon Hammer's Velocity just have to cancel out of this. Vayne's taking a lot of damage, but he just wasn't there with the strafe. Hardex will continue to chase. Will he look to get that target lock? Surrey strike forward. Uh, it looks like they'll just be able to get out of here, And uh, but that's massive damage coming out there. Dienzio, stick it around, or you can Getting me three strike and they're gonna get it. Chicken one, two, three through the wall. Kill does go over to Hardek on that sky, but you see the aggression out of this team. And when, when we talked to them, also they said we feel that we are extremely confident diving turrets and we can push these heroes to the absolute limit. Yeah, that was a really good uh, aggressive uh, invade there 
from Nemesis. And D'Enzio got a little greedy. You know, they knew they were coming. He wanted to take that back. And he did actually get the gold from it. But it, was it worth his life? It was only 33 gold that that camp provided. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it was really worthwhile. But the early damage from Nemesis Hydra. They are aware that they need to get ahead early. They need to really push this advantage that they have. You look at the item builds. Uh, the only one that's really building defensive is Chicken123 up in this lane as Lost by Top is going very likely for a Shatter Glass or a Frostburn for the first item with his build here. And uh, that's a little unconventional in terms of a roam uh, not building that Fountain of Renewal first like we see on Veins. Yeah, we see that so often. But, you know, when we look at this uh, this composition, what they really need, they need Black Feather up in that front line, diving deep. They can mm -hmm. then use uh, Hard Egg on that sky to get the damage done, kind of dance around the fight. And then as long as Lost Boy Toph has uh, a lot of action, then they can get it done. Yeah, and what they're planning here is they're actually building this tank Black Feather because, like you said, he's going to have to be on that front line. The immense gold payout coming through from Nemesis. They're going to have that big tanky Black Feather diving into the team, getting on to Kroll with that Atlas Pauldron and then have Lost Boy Tough going with these Crystal Power, the Shatter Glass just getting completed there. That's going to allow that buff that comes out. It's going to be used to buff up the attack damage of the Black Feather. So most oh. of the damage will be from the we do have engagement. D'Anzio found in the jungle. Hardik doing good damage. D'Anzio almost got him down. But that two versus one was just too much for him to handle. But you look at this. We're only nine minutes into the game. And the fact that D'Anzio almost took Hardik down there, it's pretty impressive. And if you go forward with this Cruel, he's only going to get stronger. Yeah, the starting off with the Shiver Steel, it's all about keeping the target in place. This is, a, again, we saw almost this exact same combination position yesterday uh, from Halcyon Hammer's Kinetic and it's all about just keeping the opponent away from your scarf and it's gonna be a tall task because Chicken obviously with that Black Feather can just use that Rose Offensive to dive through but it's it's gonna be very very tight as things continue to shape up the gold lead is up to about 3,000 now so Nemesis they are playing so so well here in our First game of the day, second game of the set. They really are. And you see small things like, you know, how Hardik, as he walks up into that bush, there's no vision. Veins is actually hanging out there. But what he does is he puts that Ford barrage into the bush, walks forward. It's not hitting anything. He knows it's safe to get in there. Yeah, that's, you know, the vision, it's any ability that can help with trying to figure out where your opponents is, are is such a good utility and you know they're seeing them but we're going to constantly see that throughout is that forward barrage oh it's going the full distance not hitting anyone it's safe to move in uh when they don't have a flare to check that brush when they don't have a scout trap in it and speaking of scout traps look at how many are down right now from nemesis and where they are they have vision in the opponent's jungle. They have vision in the middle of the map. They have vision in their own jungle. It's so easy to try and figure out where your opponents are just based on where they're not, where you know for a fact that they aren't. Yeah, I find it very interesting how some, even even our top teams, uh, will either choose to just go all in with scout traps Ooh. or none at okay, all. Oh, and it's going to be able to go over to uh, HH there. And now Lost Boy Toph in a bit of trouble. They're going to be able to lock him down. That kill going over a to Stark. Great Blast Tremor. Uh, yeah, great Blast Tremor. Hardek, Death Rumble above him. He tries to Suri Strike, but he can't get away there. Now three threes. We approach the 11 minute mark. And Chicken123 able to get out of that. But Halcyon Hammer is putting together a very nice fight. Yeah, they just turned that around extremely well. The Death from Above with the Surge Strike, he was trying to get the opponents to say, hey, you're mostly, you know, you're a lot of melee, come chase me on the Death <laughs> from Above. But they were having none of it. And now they're just going to ignore Chicken. He's tanky without that Adagio. He has almost no damage. So they don't care about him defending this turret. And they take it down. That's a big gold swing. Just like that, this gold lead has been chopped down to a third of what it previously was. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. You win a fight. If you're in position to take the objective, that's what you got to do. Halcyon Hammer's velocity is so good at uh, capitalizing on those mistakes. Yeah, and that's uh, really one of their big strengths is... You know, it's one of the things that we talked about with them in the qualifiers. They always seemed to be playing from behind, but they always seemed to win. You know, their early game was usually, that's the one question mark with Halcyon Hammer's Velocity that we can say is, you know, a regular thing, is their early game. Sometimes they do end up playing from behind, but they always, always come back and they always make it interesting or just completely take over. 
And now that we're getting close to that 13, 14 minute mark, this is where we usually do see Halcyon Hammer's Velocity take over the game. And it's what they're going to look to do here now. But looks like uh, Nemesis, they're, they're going to be wise to that. And they do decide to back off. Yeah, Chicken123 feeling exactly what you're saying, Tasty. And this is the early infusion coming out. So if, you know, he feels they got to defend turrets. He's got to be able to fight. He has no damage, but a lot of tank ability. So he buys this infusion up. They have to essentially not get pushed anymore, not lose a fight, because if he does, that infusion is just wasted gold. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there is Broken Myth completed on Aloha, where Hardik is still working towards that second item. Uh, going back to the farm numbers, it's still heavily in favor of Nemesis. Uh, you look at 81 for Hardik, 45 for Dienzio, but the lane has significantly tightened up. Aloha has done so much better after the, the first couple of minutes here. He's now only behind by about 10 CS, so a great job by Aloha getting himself back up. Once you get a little bit of damage onto the Scarf, it's a lot easier to farm as well. Oh, but yeah. uh, he's doing a great job of keeping himself relevant and Again, going to be that big late game threat that Nemesis has to deal with. So what are the power spikes that we're really that we, sh we should be paying attention to here in this match? Um, honestly, the big one, a lot of the big ones have come out uh, once uh, the Broken Myth is now completed for Hardex. So that's another big one over there. Uh, Dienzio is going to be looking to just continue building defense. He wants to just be this big tanky troll that you can't deal with and getting those stacks onto his opponent, getting the, you know, lowering their overall damage. That's really what he's there for. It's the utility as opposed to the carry damage style troll that, uh, and this is what we normally see. This is the typical Kroll build that comes out a lot. It's all, of, this entire composition is just all about keeping Scarf alive. But not our typical Dienzio, because this yeah, guy is usually pumping out the damage and not really that kind of just frontliner, you know, doing utility things for his team. Uh, but very interesting to see how they've switched things up here. Uh, about 35 seconds, we will have Kraken appearing on this map. So if these guys are able to secure a big fight, either way, it could lead to Kraken. Yeah, there's two Atlas Pauldrons on the side of House and Hammers. Their big concern is just stopping those auto, those basic attacks from Chicken because when they're powered up by Lost by Toph, they do so much damage. And it's just all about keeping him weak, keeping him basically incapable of killing the Scarf. Yeah, it's a great item, and uh, as long as they can really time those well, use them in the proper uh, position in the fight, they will do a lot, a lot of work with that. And uh, we see Kraken appearing on the map now. Gonna kick that gold miner out of here, ready for some action. And she looks mad. Yeah, definitely does not look to be too happy. We'll have to see whichever team can claim that objective. We'll get some serious work done right now, because honestly, with the exception of Scarf and Sky, they don't have the best Kraken killing because of the fact that obviously Chicken and Dienzio are not building a ton of damage. Chicken going a little bit more damage now after the Serpent's Mask is completed. But uh, for Dienzio on this Kroll, his damage to the Kraken is going to be actually really low when all things are said and done. I'm really surprised actually Lost Boy Tough still is sitting on an Iron Guard contract, has not upgraded it to the Storm Guard banner. It, it gives so much extra damage, that true damage coming through based on how much gold you have. And he has more than the full stacks, but he's just been so focused on getting that utility, being able to buff up chicken one, two, three, four, these fights that he's completely sacrificed his own damage because he knows that he's not going to be you know, his basic attacks are not going to be what wins them the fight. It's all about keeping his teammates alive. Right, and kind of this, the same story for both sides, very similar. Uh, death from above gonna come down. Uh, they say make it rain on top of us. Uh, either way, that ability is down. Pretty short cooldown, so not that big of a yeah, deal. I mean, but it's up in they five see seconds. an opening, and uh, Vans does get that stun off, but no one to follow up on that. It's interesting, you know, not a huge net worth lead at, at, at all, really, but it does feel Halcyon Hammers do have a strong advantage here. Now, Death from above as well. The silence is going to come out, and Dienzio's locked, getting those stacks up on Chicken 1, 2, 3. Burst of Judgment's going to come out, and oh, this stun is there. Oh, Aloha, wanting the, the ultimate coming through. Dienzio, is he going to be able to get out of here? They've got it. They're going to be able to 
gonna get the ace here. It's the oh ace for Housing goodness. Hammer's velocity, and they can take whatever objectives they want right now. They just blew this game open. Yeah, Aloha on the scarf, completely untouched in that fight, was just peppering in so much damage, and it worked to perfection. Their plan here, Dienzio, was nothing but a distraction. If, you know, Chicken one two three, he couldn't get onto the back line because he was just locked up in place. The silence, the stuns, everything was coming out on top of him. And again, Aloha was entirely untouched that entire fight. And if you can't get onto that Scarf, if you cannot kill Scarf early on in a fight or completely isolate him, you're not going to win. It's We talk about it so many times. We've seen it multiple times. Oh, yeah. The Scarf is so, so dangerous. You know, everyone coming into this, the championships is uh, Adagio. Adagio is the big thing to watch. <laughs> I got to say, I think it might be Scarf because Scarf has such a strong win rate and he completely changes the way that you have to play the game just by his presence in the on the map. Right, and I mean, we, we were talking about it in the draft. It's all about the oh, fact that they can get it on top of them. Yeah, Vayne's has found Nemesis over here. A little bit of forward barrage coming through the bushes. And uh, Hardik, got to be kind of careful here. He is backed up by his allies, but the damage potential out of Halcyon Hammer's velocity is huge if they catch him. Stun onto Hardik. The NCO's there. The silence on three. Now Scarf's winding up his ultimate. They're going to get Hardik on that sky, looking for more. They'll probably get back to their turret here. I don't know if velocity... Well, can they catch him before he gets back to real safety? And it looks like... So uh, clutch by Chicken. Chicken with those Rose offenses twice. One of them was blocked out the From Hell's Heart. The second one blocked out a Spitfire. But with the Frostburn, if that Spitfire connects, it slows him down more than enough for the rest of the team to catch up. So by using that Rose offensive to dodge both abilities there, that is the reason that he is still alive. That is the reason why this game is not going to be over necessarily off of this Kraken. I mean, it still very well could be. Kraken is going to be, it's such a tough defense right now as Nemesis, they came in to try and look for a steal, but just not going to get there fast enough as Kraken goes down so quick with a scarf. Double infusions onto Aloha, infusion onto Dienzio and Veins as well. This, uh, this could very well be the final push of this game for Halcyon Hammers. They are looking so strong. Yeah, I mean, and, and here in the last couple of minutes, this was their first net worth lead of the entire game. Mm -hmm. But of course, they do have that late game composition. They weren't too far behind. Uh, if you see the mass infusions coming out here. These guys are ready to fight. And you got to give props to Veins because he's been landing these blast tremors and doing massive work with that. Yeah, this is going to be a valiant last stand for Nemesis. If they cannot win this fight, then the game will be over. So this is this is what it's all about right here. This is the tough one. Uh, is the Kraken coming in? They're going in for it. The death from above does come down. The silence comes out, but is it a follow-up? They land on the Hardik. They've got him every time. Hardik was the first to fall in every fight. Now, as long as they stay, keep this Kraken alive, this is probably going to be GG. Chicken123 trying to do his best. Can he fend them off? Big Verse is going to come out. Nice block out of Halcyon Hammer's velocity. They get the ace. They're in the base, and they are going to take the first game here. Here, and a quite impressive victory. Yeah, Hal's Dan Hammer's velocity now up 2-0 in